The cat only grinned when it saw Alice. It looked good-natured, she thought. Still, it had very long claws and a great many teeth, so she felt she ought to treat it with respect. Cheshire Puss, she began rather timidly, as she did not know at all whether it would like the name. However, it only grinned a little wider. Come now, it's please so far, thought Alice as she went on. Would you tell me please which way I ought to walk from here? Well, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to, said the cat. I don't much care where, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you walk, said the cat. As long as I get somewhere, said Alice, adding as an explanation. Oh, you're sure to do that, said the cat. If only you walk long enough. Alice felt this could not be denied, so she tried another question. What sort of people live about here? In that direction, the cat said, waving its right paw around, lives a hatter. And in that direction, waving its other paw, lives the March Hare. You can visit either, if you like. They're both mad. But I don't want to go among the mad people, Alice remarked. Oh well, you can't help that, said the cat. We're all mad here. I'm mad, and you're mad. How do you know that I'm mad, said Alice. You must be, said the cat, or you wouldn't have come here. Alice didn't think that proved it at all. However, she went on. And how do you know you're mad? To begin with, said the cat, the dog's not mad, you grant that? I suppose so, said Alice. Well then, the cat went on, if you see the dog growl when it's angry and wags its tail when it's pleased. Now, I growl when I'm pleased and I wag my tail when I'm angry, therefore I am mad. I would call it purring, not growling. Call it what you like, said the cat. Do you play croquet with the queen much today? I should like to very much, said Alice, but I have not been invited there yet. You will see me, said the cat, and he vanished. Alice was not surprised at this, as she had been getting so used to queer things happening. And when she looked the place where it had been, it suddenly appeared again. By the by, what became of the baby? said the cat. I'd nearly forgotten to ask. It turned into a pig, Alice answered in a very quietly way, as if the cat had come back in a natural way. I thought it would, said the cat, and he vanished again. Alice waited a little, half expecting to see it again, but it did not appear and after a minute or two, she walked in the direction of the March Hare. I've seen hatters before, but a March Hare would be much more interesting. And perhaps this May, he won't be so mad, mad, at least as not as mad as it was in March. As she said, she looked up and there was the cat again, sitting on the branch of the tree. Did you say pig or fig, said the cat. I said pig, replied Alice. I wish you would stop appearing and disappearing so suddenly. You make one quite giddy. All right, said the cat, and this time he vanished quite slowly, beginning at the end of his tail and ending with his grin, which remained for some time after the rest of it had gone.